Please join me in welcoming to the stage Andrea Tyler Evans. Thank you, Joan. I'm honored uh, to be here today. I'm the owner and publisher of Front Doors Media and The Red Book, a company that tells incredible stories about our community. Thank you for having me here today to tell a little of mine. Ten years ago, after having a baby and having what I thought was uh, my first series of sinus infections, I had a routine outpatient uh, procedure at St. Joe's for nasal polyps. Following that surgery, I was told that there was a growth behind the polyps about the size of a golf ball. But not to worry, go home, rest, and we'll see you on Monday to um, take care of all the, the post-op work. That next visit started with the doctor flipping his little doctor flip phone, and I heard the word neuroblastoma as he was hanging up the, the, the phone. And he told my husband and I that he had just hung up with Dr. Robert Spetzler of Barrow Neurological Institute, and I had a very, very rare form of cancer called esthesio neuroblastoma cancer of your olfactory gland. Do you know how small your olfactory gland is? About the size of your pinky fingernail. This is a very rare form of cancer, about 1 in 2.1 million. I'd rather have my odds be the uh, odds of hitting a hole in one with that golf ball, but this was a different situation for sure. This was 10 years ago. I received excellent care from the team at Barrow. And after healing from my first uh, bout with, with uh, cancer, I asked Dr. Spetzler, so how many of me have you seen in your career as he was getting ready to uh, retire? And he sat back, it was this Dr. Spetzler, right? And he said, maybe you're number 20. There are only eight places in the country where you would go and get treated uh, for this type of cancer. They were shocked that I lived up the street. The cancer has returned twice, most recently in early 2020, just as COVID was hitting, and it returned in my lymph nodes and my neck. This was always an area that they told me to watch out for, so I wasn't surprised when this happened. Um, it actually made me more determined than ever to uh, be treated and be treated as thoroughly as possible. For patients like me with extremely rare cancers, you're always in this state of, um, we don't know. And that's really hard to hear as a patient, especially when you also hear you're so young, you have, you know, these children to take care of and you know we see you own, own your own business so you're in this very odd place whenever you're you know with your team of physicians and and all of the support staff and there's no research when you're a one in 2.1 million type of person um, but there is a network of the doctors that care for patients like me and so you do hear little um, pieces of that as you come back, um, in my case, three times for treatment. So just some thoughts on that and that kind of instance um, for those of you um, that work with teams that see patients that, in conditions that are considered truly rare. Cancer is not rare anymore. I don't care how old you are. Um, I don't like being told that anymore. Cancer is abundant across all ages, all people, and it is 
you know, becoming systematic as a, as a diagnosis. I fear that um, cancer will surpass heart disease as the number one killer in this country. Is a very real issue. So being told that you're rare, I, I wish that language would really go away. Communication. <laughs> I'm a communicator. And that is my uh, biggest thing and, and what I try to do to advocate for myself, um, especially when you go, you know, from place to place. Um, in my case, I have an ENT, I have an oncologist, I have a surgeon. Um, I've had a few side issues from this, so some other specialist appointments. And it's hard, and I can't imagine if um, other people her, her, this is not their profession, to kind of piece together all those appointments. And whether you're a good note taker or not, I am not. Um, there needs, I think, in today's world of technology, a better way to collect all of that info. And again, dumb down for, you know, the husbands and the mothers and the other people that care for us that could be shared of what is the long-term plan. What are we looking at? So you're in the appointment and you're hearing all these things, but you go back to regurgitate it and it, and it doesn't go well. Um, so I'm here to advocate today for um, something that could be done about that so that all the little things that are being thrown your way, which sometimes not great news, uh, which throws you into another state, uh, could be done to simplify um, the patient's need and a little bit more of a roadmap, especially in your most complicated uh, cases. But I love being a barrel patient. I'm so fortunate and blessed to live in this community, and I really appreciate you all being here today. Thank you.